Uh, reducing carbon emissions is the aim of UN climate talks underway in Morocco. Representatives of more than 200 countries are discussing how to implement the Paris Agreement. Tariq Basley is at the COP22 summit and he joins us now live. We are hearing that some progress has been made, Tariq. Uh, some small progress, it, would, it would, has to be said. Uh, the last day of COP is always a little bit of a, a mystery, knowing what will be achieved before people finally pack it in for the year. But in the last couple of hours, we've, we've uh, had an announcement which relates to um, a group of nations, 47 of them, they're the most vulnerable nations when it comes to uh, climate change, the effects of climate change, and they've com pledged together to, uh, by the year 2050, rely solely on renewable energy. Uh, an important pledge and an important commitment to have been made. Uh, I'm joined now by Stephen Singer. He's from the Climate Action Network International. Uh, Stephen, uh, Stefan, tell me why these aren't big emitters. These aren't the, the big players when it comes to greenhouse gases. So why is this particular agreement and commitment important? First, it was not thinkable that, um, let's say one year ago, that at least one country would commit to 100% renewable energy. It was a dream when we started this NGO to push 100% renewable energy. We were accused of smoking something in the morning, being Ethiopian, not realistic, etc., etc. Now it's 47 countries. Yes, they are poor, and that's the point. Because they are poor, for them it's a big achievement, a big commitment, um, because they don't have the means, the finances, and the technologies. Um, so it's a really, really, ach real achievement. We Second, those countries are least developed countries um, to, to a large extent, and they will grow their energy consumption. They don't have energy access for many people. They will grow energy consumption. So then, if that is all based on renewables, that's a big achievement for the world. We see a lot of promises made at these events over the years. This particular one, is it achievable in your view? Of course it's achievable. Um, we will work with them. Um, scientists will work with them. Governments will work with them. Donors will work with them. And we hope, it's not easy, we hope they're going to um, harvest the, the fruits one of well, the renewables. Let's talk about donors because one of the big disappointments for, for, for a number of countries here at this year's COP is that the financing, the passing of money from rich countries to poor countries to help them seems to have almost been left out. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any, any progress. That's true. On the other side, we have seen miserable performance of the um, developed countries. Um, to give an example, the public funding for adaptation needs for poor countries is 120th of the public funding, public funding to fossil fuels on, for LNGs, for gas, for pipelines. That's miserable. Developed countries are far, far away from uh, uh, committing to finally, re realistically, to their pledge for 100 billion. Um, a dollar annually for mitigation and adaptation of developing countries. That's a very poor performance. So a poor performance, not getting a good rating at all in terms of the uh, delegates here at this year's uh, COP UN climate talks, but we'll be covering uh, the events as they happen during the afternoon and, and uh, right up until when we actually have some kind of declaration or announcement at the end of the day. Thanks for that, Tariq Basley.